Oh, that's a good one. Ah, she's stuck in there, but that's a decent fish here. Now at this point, there's no sense in panicking. There's no sense in doing anything other than holding this fish tight. Usually they get scared when you run the trolling motor close to them, as you'd expect, but ooh. See, like I said, and sometimes they'll come out, but I'm not trying to like just horse this fish out of here. Just keeping pressure. That's a good one. That's a real good one, guys. Four inch Yama crawl. Boom. That's what you want. Five aught tro car. TK135. That's not a bad way to start the day. You know, this time of year, obviously things start to cool off. The uh, shad begin to get really active. The days are getting shorter. The bass know that winter's coming. It's time to feed up. And it's usually very tough this time of year, but it starts to get good. The colder that it gets, those bass know that it's time to start eating. And uh, for the most part, I want to say the uh, fall is mostly about the bait fish, but in this grass, you got to remember too, this grass has matured the most it's going to be matured all year before it dies off for the winter. So you've got a lot of bluegill and a lot of bait fish still hanging around all this matted grass. And the bass are going to be where the bait are this time of year. So there's going to be bait in the grass. There's going to be bait, you know, headed back in some of the backs of the pockets in the creeks. Um, that's really the two, two biggest things, either fish grass or fish where the bait's at. So when you're around the, here's one. I swung away that time. Okay. Yeah, old humpback, dude. <laughs> Look at that right there. I doubt that was from me. One thing that's really good about this bait, the plastic is, uh, it's just right, meaning that the texture of the plastics good for the action but it also <clears throat> is very durable i mean i just caught that fish and rig my tro car right back in it and it's it's good to go the bait's definitely durable but you get the action at the same time that's something that's hard to accomplish it not only holds the hook well but it's also just thin enough that it can come out as well whenever you do get a bite i mean there's some baits that you, know, you got to think of it like this the better it holds the hook it lessens your chance of um, hooking the bass. So when you're not snagging cover all the time, you probably are gonna have a harder time hooking a fish. And whenever you're fishing this kind of cover, you want to have max, you know, maximum efficiency as far as hookup ratio. So, you know, this time of year, the grass continues to hollow out from the heat, dies off. Um, and I feel like that's what makes the mat bite, the frog bite, whatever, so good this time of year. You've got grass that's still alive down below that's creating oxygen, but as you can see right here, bluegills went everywhere. They want to be around this grass. It's creating the best canopy they've had under it all year, and the bass are just going to be around that bait. And they, they got a lot of open, open water to run up in this stuff, to move around under, underneath of it, and it just gets better and better really until it's gone. It'll continue to deteriorate until there's very little roots left and then a good strong, you know, current and wind will push it, push it on down the river until next year. So got a couple things going on this time of year, but it's hard to overlook the grass for, it's hard to overlook those bluegill eaters for quality. And punch is just one of the most efficient ways of targeting those fish. It's no different if you're targeting fish that are on bait. Uh, timing is such a, such a huge deal. I feel like the morning can be, can be decent, but I feel like you know, you're going to have that lull, which we're probably in right now. But as the day progresses later on in the afternoon, it just seems like the water warms up, the bait becomes a lot more active, and you just that's when the majority of the activity really goes down, I believe, in the fall. It's, it's the later, the better. Um, a little bit of a morning fee, but definitely the later, the better, I think. And it starts to get dark fairly early, too, so it's not like you have to be out till 9 o'clock anymore to... Uh, to get on a pretty decent bite in the fall. But man, it gets really good. When that water starts getting down into the low 60s, upper 50s, that's when things really start to, uh, to get right. 
when you're around them, I mean, I feel like the fish, to describe it to someone, I feel like the fish just really pile up together in the fall. There's groups of fish that are around the groups of bait, you know, whether that be bluegill or shad. Um, so you can go a long time and not find them, but typically when you do find a group of bass, there's a lot of them there. Yeah, I'm a curl. Yes. How about that, boys? Slow and steady. Right where you want them. TK 135, four inch Yama crawling green pumpkin. Just making a bunch of holes. You know, I'm using a 7 uh, Eleven favorite rods, my punching rod that I designed. Eight to one gear ratio reel. I like. I don't want to get a ratio that's nine to one, 10 to one. I feel like I lose some torque. I lose some power trying to winch those fish out of the grass. So I want a reel that I can take up a bunch of line, but you got to have a balance. So I like an eight to one, 40 pound vicious no fade braid. It's a eight carrier braid. It's super smooth, super quiet in and out of this grass. That's why I really like that no fade by Brit vicious. I don't like going 50. I don't like going 65. The diameters get really thick. I feel like when the wind's blowing, you don't get through the mats. You aren't as efficient. It doesn't cut through the mats near as well. Yes, you have to retie more, retie every hour, every two hours, and you'll be fine with the 40, but I really like that. Uh, ounce and a quarter weight, I peg it with a, with a uh, stop to keep everything together. One big key whenever I'm flipping mat, or flipping and pitching anytime is a Trocar TK-135 uh, flipping hook, straight shank hook. It's got the perfect wire, a great keeper, a welded eye to tie my snell knot a giant barb, uh, the TK-135 is the best flipping hook on the planet for a guy that likes to use braid or and or braid to fluoro. So uh, that's my basic setup, but just slow and steady with the old flip stick and the grass in the fall can be a good way to, uh, a good way to have a good day. One of the biggest reasons why I like fishing in the grass or in, heavy, in a lot of heavy cover situations is because there's an abundance of it usually, and you really just have to Put the trolling motor down and you know figure out where they are and that's what i like about it it's not like you get on the map and say oh i'm gonna fish this point and this hump like you have to kind of get up in here and and spend a lot of time at times to figure out where they are i feel like a lot of the competition doesn't commit to this kind of fishing the majority of the guys don't commit to it and that's one thing that i really have enjoyed about it <laughs> 